Hello, citizens of Millenville. Yeah, welcome to this video. I really shouldn't have done that. <laughs> that was that's annoying already. What I have know. I done? What have I done? <laughs> but anyways, we anyway. uh, last time we left off, uh, she dishonored her cat. Yes. And now we're here. Yeah. So show pester log. <clears throat> All right. Ah, <clears throat> oh, there you are. John, John said your house was burning down. Are you on fire yet, or what? No. But now I have retired to the safety of a smaller building, which is much closer to the forest fire threatening my residence. Oh, well, that's a relief. John told me to get the game to help you out. Uh, to, uh, get, to help get you out of there, so I'm working on that now. Working on it? Yeah, my bro's... Copy, long story. Hey, don't tell John, but I think he might have been right about the puppets. They're sort of freaking me out a little. <clears throat> You're referring to your brother's collection? I mean, don't be wrong, I still think it's cool and all. The semi-ironic puppet thing, or whatever, or semi-semi-ironic? Man, I don't even know. I ju I'm just starting to think of some of this shit is going a little far, and it's kind of fucked up. I've seen those websites. I like them. Uh huh. Yeah, well you would. Oh man, I wish little cow wouldn't look at me like that with those dead eyes. Jesus. Sometimes I sometimes I dream that he's re really cool and he's talking to me and I wake up in a cold sweat and basically flip the fuck out. Mm. Oh, sorry. Interesting. Oh god. Why don't I just tell you my dream? You're gonna have a field day for that. I'm currently scrawling notes furiously onto one of my many psychoanalysis journals I maintain for you. Published papers forthcoming. <clears throat> because, you know, it's not like either of us have anything better to do at the moment than to evaluate each other's radically debilitating pathologies. Yeah, I'm gonna get moving. Oh, have you heard from John? He's not answering me. He won't answer me either, but I'm watching him. I, sus I suspect he's preoccupied with the fact that he j just had a bucket of water dumped on his head by the ghost of his dead grandmother, who also happens to be dressed like a clown. Ha 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 ha. Alright, I'm out. Later. Interrogate this bad woman. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I got Nana Sprite. Oh, yeah. Okay. <coughs> um, Nana? Yes, dear? Wow, you scared the living daylights out of me. Ho, ho, ho. Well, I guess it was a really great prank. Good one, Nana. Anyway, are you really my dead Nana? Of course, John. I've come back to help, help you guys with the journey through the medium. Ah, that's not old lady, that's more Jane. And far <laughs> beyond, I am delighted to see what a fine young man you have turned out to be, just like your father. Okay, I guess I'll take your word for it. I don't remember you at all. My dad said I was really, really young when you died. Hey, speaking of which, do you know where he is? I looked everywhere for him. Your your father was kidnapped. Oh no! When you crossed over to, over to the medium, he was apprehended by the forces of darkness with your president. Presence here has awakened. What? Okay, so what is the medium you're talking about? It is where we are now, a realm it, that is the, a ring of the pure void, dividing light and darkness. Uh, it flows in the thick of the. In. 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 A place untouched by the flow of time in your universe. Oh. You mean because we're inside a computer or in the game software or something? A computer? What? Why? What is that, dear? Some fangled conjunction with like the horseless auto box car? Could be John for a second. I'll be right back. What? What? You had to be John for a second. I really, I had to go to take care of something real quick. Ah, oh, fine. <laughs> well, um, uh, it's like this machine that, uh. Of course I know what a computer is, John. I was just pulling your leg. Ho, 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 ho. 
Oh, okay. No, John, you're not inside a computer or software or anything like that. Try not to be so linear, dear. The software that brought you here was merely a me mechanism that served as a gateway. It's ro rotated in a, in a way it served to, to invoke this room's instance, yet it stands independently of any physical machine and somewhat paradoxically it always has. I'm not I'm sure not I get it, but all right. So what do I actually need to be doing here? I think it would be best if we started with the big picture. Okay, I, I was back. Okay. You you just left me. What? Did my my sister needed me to unpause Netflix. What? Why did she need you to unpause Netflix? I have no idea. She she didn't. She, she's a grown woman. She can help you with that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Go on. What? Go, uh, click the go on thing. Oh. Above the medium, behind the seven gates, residing at the, the core of the Insosphere, in is a place we know as Gaia. The legend holds that Gaia exists in a dormant, dormant crystal of unlimited cr creative potential. What does that mean, you ask? I'm afraid my lips are sealed about that, dear. Ho oh, oh. But needless to say, with a re for a realm of such profound importance is concerned. The forces of life will forever be charged with its defenses while the forces of darkness just as per persistently covered with its destruction. <laughs> Next page. Next page. And so it happens at the center of this realm, whose fate and question are the forces of dual on a stage of it, stuck in eternal stalemate. Yes, they have told it in this manner forever. That is, until you showed up. Me? Henry? Oh, me? Yes, you, John. Before your mishap with my ashes, you may as recall the spine frequency incarnated was resulted from its kernels hatching. And you see, this hatching occurs automatically in response to their arrival. The results of it it's a pair of kernels, one dark, one light, one dark, one light, each carrying the information they were prototyped be with before the hatch. One goes down to a kingdom and is trenched in darkness, the other one go the other goes up to a kingdom basking in the light. Each comes to rest in an orb atop the sp atop a spire, which there which there are three orbs in kind. The four sp spires are sit are situated above the sprout throne and these two thr thrones are presided over two re respective so souvenir powers and one of the kernels are situated that that is the when the game is afoot the true war begins the life life versus dark good versus evil this is a war that that the forces of light always decide to decide to lose without expectation a quest of fertility then Wow, really? What's the point? That remains you, for you to find out. For, for you see, the journey you're about to take is the ultimate riddle. Whoa. Wait, let me read that again. The ultimate riddle! There we go, that's better. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> for now, you, mu you must... Your objective is to proceed towards Gaia's and pass through the first gate. Situated above... Directly above your house, not, not even terribly far. The, the gates will become progressively more difficult to reach, uh, so you better be prepared to sharpen your adventuring skills. How am I supposed to get up there? You build! No, no, exclamation point. <laughs> okay, wait. I think I get it now. Oh, wait. Continue. Oh. So I guess the battle against good and evil is sort of irrelevant. Well, I don't know. That all sounds kind of weird. But in any case, we build the house to get to those these gates, and then I can save my dad. Yes, and, John. And then after that, we solve this ultimate riddle thing and save the Earth from destruction. Oh no, I'm afraid not. What? <laughs> <laughs> just John, just slowing down. Wait, what? What? 
<laughs> your plan is your plan is done for, dear. There's nothing you can do about that. Oh. Your purpose is so much more important than saving that silly old planet, though. And that is. Oh, 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 oh. Yes. yes. I will have to. Have... Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, Go. <clears throat> yes, I will have to agree with the float hag about that. The float hag. <laughs> John, you were such a good boy. I know you will succeed. Thanks, Nana. You're a good boy, and good boys deserve treats. Hooray! I'm going to, I'm going to make you some cookies. <sighs> the hag mentioned cookies. Pursue, pursue her. <clears throat> All right. Oh god damn it, that's just what you need. More baked goods. John, do not say no to cookies. I command you to get them. <clears throat> Wait, did I read this? Right. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. You totally abjured the hell out of that idea. You're so busy abjuring, you don't you didn't you don't even notice Rose has been trying to pest you this whole time. Rose, hit John in the head with the box to get his attention. I like how Rose is, like, the picture of Rose is, like, glaring, like, John, answer the <laughs> damn message. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You give John a sw swift dr uh, drubbing in the noggin, but he is uh, under, under, undeterred. That, that is some fit he's throwing. Perhaps you'll take this spare moment to contemplate the Nana Sprite's strange tale. It may also behoove you to record your thoughts on these developments in your game facts walkthrough slash journal. It can be hard finding time to update it. In fact, you're not even sure where you found the time to write what's already there. Oh, is that so, Jaspers? And who do you think you're looking at with that smug grin? Last thing you need is some sass from a dead cat. It's pretty much all his fault that you're in the mess in the first place. So he can just button it. John! Cookies! Now! <laughs> you refuse outright. <laughs> this importance this... is inseparable! Go get the cookies! Well, when you put it so politely, how can John decline? John? You are... Stupid. You really need to work on your manners. Stupid, stupid, dumb. That's not a command. It's nothing. It's stupid. You're stupid. For the last time, I command you to get the cookies, boy. It's just not gonna happen, buddy. Years in the future. But really not enough to write home about it. And write home about it. And a dolchant finger slips mid keystroke. Oh, I see. When he hits the A. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, I'm looking. I clicked the link. Oh, me too. Okay. Beans, mustard, beans, mustard. Human. Etiquette. <laughs> Aww. All right. Next page. Oh <clears throat> no. Do you want to just go paragraph by paragraph? Yep. We'll do this like last time. Okay. I'll start with the first one. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> I may have been a bit hasty in, in advising you not to bother with the prototyping process. If I spared any detail, it was only to op optimize your chances of survival. And if you find yourself begrudging the absence of certain instructions, which if followed would have resulted in your demise, then I guess that makes two of us. Otherwise, you're oh. welcome. Dang it. <sighs> but <laughs> the fact that I was gonna go otherwise, you're welcome. Alright, your turn. <laughs> <laughs> no. You saw through me, didn't you? <laughs> sort of. 
but the fact appears to be all be that prototyping the kernel sprite before making your gateway may offer the only opportunity to exercise control over your new environment, a place known as the medium. Also, if prototyped with one or two, specifically a abate loosely, humanoid and or sentient, uh, sentient elements, living or otherwise, it occurs the chance to have all this explained to you by an op operational guide through which a sort of cryptic sketchy double speak your choice of prototyping elements ge uh, and gender in lui of this you may be forced to settle for my clear though explanation uh and a do as do dubious de uh, decision of raw data again don't mention it if you have made it to the if you have made it to the medium with an unmolested vanilla sprite, well, I've already covered the bad news about this missed opportunity. Now we'll go into this further soon. Though to what extent this actually is bad news? Wait. Though to what extent this actually is bad news, I'm not sure. I know only the result of my co-player's current configuration, wherein the sprite was prototyped once before the departure and once after. Which brings us to the good news, which is that you can still prototype after your departure and salvage the massively rewarding experience of haggling with an exposition-slinging phantom guide, so long as you avoid prototyping with terribly inert items such as a brass door knocker in your father's pornography collection. Actually, Actually that, that might, might be interesting. Dang it. Oh, sorry. Ah, uh, go ahead. <laughs> if you're struck by the spirit of such experimentation, please don't hesitate to contact me about it. So yes, you can enhance your spirit, your sprite in this way, but doing so after your departure will no longer induce the, this effect on the medium I allude to. Th that can only be accomplished with one, one or more pre-departure prototypings. In fact, we can entrope on that uh, trope, there are only so many ways to prototype a sprite. Tiers of pro prototyping in relation to departure. Both before, one before, one after, both b after, only one, either before or after, or none. These, uh, uh, those occurring uh, before will affect the medium through the kernel's hatching process, and your guide, i.e. the sprite, will those occurring will only affect the sprite. The effect that the effects this process has on the medium, or more globally, the incipus sphere, are still vague to me. They have to do with flavoring the forces you will struggle against, and generally, all forces at odds with each other in this realm. It has given me some insight into the nature of the game, which again I derive through extrapolation. We appear to be engaging in instance of a dimension with a highly flexible set of parameters and a series of objectives surrounding an equally flexible mythological framework. This framework seems to be seems to begin as a sort of blank template and evolves with the player's actions, and likely further evolves with the addition of more host client connections and thus more prototyped kernels. I regret to say this, I cannot be any more specific than that without loosely and and dropping further. There are plenty of questions that occur to me. However, questions concerning the kernel sprites, which I raised impractically already, such as what what is the effect of an unprototyped kernel on the medium, or a doubly prototyped kernel for that matter, does and does more si silent our questions? Does the about this dimension itself do uh, all players worldwide make it to this dimension if they succeed to com succeed complete if they successfully complete their departure or is a universe blank uh, or is a uh, unique blank instance of the of the dimension created for each player I have no evidence but instinct tells me it is closer to the latter situation there is no indication of any players present in this realm alterations in the realm see uh, seem sti uh, sting see singularly centered on 
on the actions of my co-player and myself. If I had to state, stake anything on it, I would guess every separate client server pair act, activities its own a fresh copy of an inconspire or a unique session, if you will. <laughs> but the quantity of players is a further complication which invites more questions. It seems the game was designed to suit two players most naturally, the server and the client. But through a mishap, my co-player and I have slipped out of the obvious tandem arrangement. And the only logical course of action to continue playing is to string a daily chain of server slash client connections together until presumably the chain is complete. Theoretically, we could complete this chain with only one other player, functioning as the server to my client and the client to my current co player server, assuming he can recover. The strange. Oh, wait, no, that's you. The strange thing uh, is, though, in our instance of this dimension, there are four. Rep Replicals for divine kernels, not three. Does this mean we are destined to have a four-player chain? How could the game know such a thing? Perhaps it does not, and if this proves to be the case, I trust I will be sufficiently numb to the realization. Oh, she she crossed that out. I guess I don't have to read that, right? Huh? Henry. Henry. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> read it. It's not that much. Okay, I can consider nothing <coughs> about this game surprising at this point. Bless you. And in fact, from the first moment of play, it managed to deviate so far from my expectation. Excuse me, expectations that I completely forgot what my original purpose with it was. I had chances to test some information I obtained on good authority during the prototyping phases, but it completely slipped my mind. Instead, games catacombs securing the dark twisting past to necromancy were blundered into rather on accident. Wait. Perhaps you don't need to know any of this. Rethink organization? Uh, rethink organization. Be, be, be way, way steep. Blah, 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 sludge. Slim down. Well, trim down. Blah. She's not finished with this yet. Jeez, cut her some slack. Maybe you should uh, maybe you should bug some, somewhere else for a while. Or at least the very least, someone with some wind else. Months in the past, but not many. All right. <clears throat> oh wow! Um, hey, Henry. Oh, it's torture for the both of us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Ready. Yep. Yeah. Hi, happy birthday, Rose. Hello, and thanks. Did you get John's present yet? I just opened it at this very moment. What a stunning coincidence you would ask about it now. I am stunned. He yeah, I know. What will you do? What will you make with it? And who said it was something from which something else could be made? Well, John did tell me what it was. Duh. I suppose I'll take a stab at learning the craft. It's the least I can do in response to, this, to the subtle dig concealed in his gesture. He often tells me I need a new hobby when I make perfectly reasonable analytical remarks. Oh, but Rose, I don't think you meant anything, anything like that by it. You say not everyone always meets the opposite of what they, what, the, the way you, may, you and Dave always do. Maybe. His birthday is in a few months, isn't it? Yep. I fi oh, sorry. I finally finished a present for him. I've been wor working on it for years. Years? It's so hard to tell when you're joking or if you're even capable of it. <laughs> I just mailed it to him, so I, I, so it is sure to get there on time. Mail takes a while to get anywhere from here. Oh. I'll probably craft something with strong sentimental value. That should burn him. I don't think you really mean that. I guess not. Ooh, excuse me. Ooh. So, shall I expect a green package dropped to my house via airmail from whatever screwball cranny of the globe you're tucked into? Er, no. 
sorry, but you're sort of hard to shop for. Besides, I have something for you. For you today that I think you will be like better than anything in a box. Oh. It is a tip! This is already intriguing enough to compensate for the great scarcity of lavish gifts parachuted from the sky. Please go on. Did you have a pet long ago that died? Yes. Okay, well, did you feel... What did you... How did you feel about your cat? Did you love him a lot? Okay, well, I didn't mention it was a cat or that it was a male. Let's pretend I'm surprised and you're embarrassed and move on. To answer your question, I would describe my feelings toward the animal as lukewarm. Um, okay, that's fine. It doesn't really matter, I, th I think. Just, what if someone told you you could play a game where you could bring it back to life? If someone told me that, I would regard the remark with a great deal of skepticism. If that someone was you, on the other hand, then I would have to ask preemptively. Is that someone you? Yes, that someone is me. I just thought it, you might find it interesting. So what is this game? Oh, I don't know. I'm just saying it. Saying it. I'm just saying is all. I think you'll hear about it later. I think maybe you could talk to John and Dave about it. Though they are way, are way more into all that stuff than I am. I'll see what the word on the street is about it in due time. For now, I should probably order a copy of Mitting for Assholes. It'd be a shame if I ran late with John's present. <coughs> Dave, get Katana. You capture log the katana, 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1 equals 9 divided by 10 with the remainder of 9. <laughs> and prepare to venture out into the apartment to retrieve your bro's copy of the game. But first, maybe. Just maybe. Oh, what's our time? Dave, retrieve dead bird. Okay. Dave, retrieve dead bird. I read Dude, this. That bird oh. is long gone. It won't, probably won't last long in this heat anyways. You don't even know I know what's up with this sea heat. The sun is threatening is threatening to set uh, to set but won't step off. It's uh, staring you down like the big big red eye of hot needles uh, dip, skipping off a groove. It's tra tracing ra round the earth while lingering in midair. It's heat Heat seems to suspend itself, stretching like it like a warped final. It is meant to meant to rain this se season, but there aren't any a drip in the sky. Even a little drizzle would help. Might the uh might help to fizzle the this sizzle a little to a little bizzle. Set the record straight on this glo uh, globe turned tizzle. So don't cha change the dizzle. Turn it up a little. I want I want. Uh, I got a living room full of fi fine dime bristles, waiting on the pr on the prizzles and the dizzle and the shizzle. G to the bizzizzle, bizzack. Now, ladies, here we get gizzo. When the pin in the crib, ma, drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. English <laughs> romantic poem, poet John Keats. Wait, what's this? Ooh, dude. What's in what? the little arrow, in the video, uh, thing, at the end there'll be like a little forward arrow. Click that. Okay. All right, Dave, exit your room and go into the living room. Sorry, little dude. Coming through. Gotta put you down for, for a bit. You figured you left him hanging long enough. Alright. Dave, hastily enter the room with wild ambition. Okay. You barge in and see a familiar face. A friendly face. You stand in the living room. Your bro, bro spends both his, his days in here. At night, he crashes on the futon over there. You don't see him anywhere, though. There's the... The puppet chest he stores little cow in when he takes him out on gigs, but he, but when he's home he usually leaves cow on display somewhere, and good with good reason, cause cow is totally sweet, so sweet, man. Dave, pity, uh, pity the fool. No. Oh. 
with your brother's Mr. T puppet, which of course is kept in the apartment with a sense of profound humorous irony. But as usual with your bro's exploits, this is no ordinary irony, or anything close to a pedestrian tier one ironic gesture, which is a meager single step removed from sincerity. This is like ten levels of irony removed from the original joke. It might have been funny like eight years ago to joke about Mr. T and how he was sort of lame, but that was the very thing that made him awesome and badass, and that his awesomeness was also sort of the joke. But in this case, the joke is the joke. And that degree of irony itself is also the joke, and so on. Only highly adept satirical ninjas like you and your bro excuse me, can appreciate stuff like this. It's cool taking stuff that other people think is funny, but you know it really isn't, and making it funny again by adding subtle strata of irony, which are utterly undetectable but to the untrained eye. Also, for good measure, Mr. T is wearing a leather thong and handcuffed to a pantsless Chuck Norris puppet. God, you hope you can be as good as your bro at this someday. You never tell him that, though. Dave, find little Cal and give fist bumps. Uh, what's the time? One minute, six seconds. Okay. Cal is nowhere nowhere in sight. All you see is a bunch of your bro's weird nude puppets sc sc uh, strewn around hazily. You. You guess they're, uh, think they're, these things are kind of cool. Sort of. Dave, play a game on the Xbox. Looks like your bro is... Alright. We still have 40 seconds and, uh, left. All right, read, 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 read. It looks like your bro was playing. It's not like him to leave in the middle of some some totally intense gaming. Not like him to place, place, place Cal either. Man, you hope the little guy's all right. All right. Okay, we're gonna have to leave that there. Yes. And uh, yeah. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching. Yes, thank you so much. And we please love you. like, comment. Well, not that much, but we love you. Your views are pre. You are appreciated. We love every single one of you. Oh, there's a timer. Except for you, John. Mhm. Mm John, you're a dick. Yes. Die. Go away. No, don't, don't, don't. You know who you are, John. You know what you did. You four foot high dwarf. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching. I hope, please like, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I hope you visit our small, tiny, itty bitty little town. Yeah, again, please, thank you.